Dum -ba -da -dum. Howdy, welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. I am Banjo Ben, your host here on the website that teaches you how to play banjo mandolin. And this week we're in drop D guitar. We're going to learn this old fiddle tune called Fork of Deer. It's in the key of D and I want to take the opportunity to, to learn something in drop D tuning just because it's, it's fun and it sounds good. If you're watching on YouTube or Facebook here in a moment, I'll ask you to come over to the website BanjoBenClark.com. Listen to me, you can join as a Gold Pick member and have access to hundreds of videos. I've been doing these lessons every week for years, so there's lots of them over there. We have the tab for this uh, tune exactly as I played it. We've got about a 20 minute video lesson, and then I have three different speeds of MP3 rhythm tracks that you can download and practice with, all right? So let's jump into this first measure of Forked Deer and Drop D tuning on the guitar. <laughs> Today we're going to learn an old fiddle tune called Fork a Deer. I've already taught this one on mandolin, which by the way, that version goes really good with this one. Uh, this one's in the key of D. Um, there's lots of different ways we could play this. Um, I say lots, there's several different ways. I see a lot of people capo up to the second fret and then play it out of C position, but I thought this might be a great opportunity to learn something um, in drop D tuning and to stay low on the guitar. It's one of my favorite things to do. What do I mean by drop D tuning? I just simply mean that our lowest guitar string, which is normally tuned to an E note, we're going to tune it down a whole step so that it's a D note. And you can tell that you've reached it because it'll be an octave lower than our fourth string. So if those two tones match, then you've got it. And I, I love playing a drop D tuning when I'm in the key of D because then we can play all six strings with that D chord and get that big, full, pretty, bassy sound. Now this is a fiddle tune and it has a, a typical fiddle tune structure, meaning that we've got two A parts and then two B parts. Okay, so that usually the A parts and B parts have different chord progressions and, and it's the same way for this. What I'm going to do is, like I do in a lot of my fiddle tunes, the first time through the A parts, so those first eight measures, I'm going to give you the very basic melody. Then the second time through the A part, we're going to spice it up. And then the same for the B parts, okay? So this, I would consider this a, a basic, uh, or an, I'm sorry, an intermediate lesson, but it's also a basic lesson because you could just take these uh, basic melodies and string them together. Let's throw up the tab there, and the first four measures that I have in the tab is simply a kickoff, and I just use this kickoff to establish the tempo, um, or if you're the, the first person to uh, kick this song off, if you're in a jam group, then you might use something like this. It simply sounds like this. <laughs> So it kind of mimics something that a fiddle might do, okay? So we're going to start on the fourth fret of our A string, of our fifth string. And we're going to, I'll play it with my ring finger. I'm going to slide it to the fifth fret. And that slides up to a D note, which is the same note as our fourth string. So we're just reinforcing that D note. So we slide, and then we do this little shuffle pattern on the open D string. Then we do it again in measure two. And I like to leave that ring finger down just so that that D note sustains, okay? So it, it just gives it a more full sound. Then when we get to measure three, we're gonna kind of cut that pattern in half. We're gonna do a slide, two notes on the open D string, then another slide, two more notes. And when we get to measure four, it's just four quarter notes that walk up into the melody of the song. It starts on the D string, jump down to the A string, then we're going to play the second fret and then the fourth fret. And then measure five is where the actual first A part starts. Okay, so starting in measure five, for the next eight measures, we're playing through the first A part. And we're going to start on our open D string, our open fourth string, and we're going to play right up a D major scale. So open, two, four, open G string, and then land on the second fret for a quarter note then I want you to leave that finger down while you come back and play the fourth fret on the D string again. So measure five slowly sounds like this. So let me just play measures one through five, slow down a little bit, and then just keep in mind that I have another video here on the site where I play the whole thing through much slower than this. As we get to measure six, our chord changes. We're going to a, a G chord here, and the melody sounds like this. 
So that's simple enough. My first note's an open third string, open G string. Our next note is a B note. Now I'm going to choose to do it on the fourth fret here. Instead of jumping up, I could play this open B string. And the reason why I do that is because if we fret it, whenever we let off that fret, the B note will stop. Okay, whereas if we play the open B string, it's going to continue to ring, and I don't want it to ring. So I'm going to play a quarter note on the G string, a quarter note on the fourth fret, and then walk down that D scale. I forgot to mention, but you'll want to pay attention to your pick stroke directions. That's what those little arrows are beneath each one of the notes. Down arrows is down stroke, up arrows, up stroke, you know the deal. Now measure seven is a repeat of measure five. We've already seen it. And then measure eight, we're going to walk down the D major scale all the way down to the A string. So we're going to start on the open third string, open G string, then do four, two, open, four, two, open. And now we're going to kind of repeat that idea a little bit. So measure nine, if you'll notice, is the exact same as measure seven. And measure 10 is exactly the same as measure six. So let me play six through 10, slow down a little bit. Now as we get into measure 11, we're in the last two measures of that first A part. Okay, so we're gonna wrap this up before we go back into another eight measure section of an A part. We're gonna start on our open D string with a quarter note, and then we're gonna jump down to the A string, and then play second fret, open, four, two, and then measure 12, we start with our open fifth string here, and then we're gonna jump down, we've got this low D string here, and we're gonna play four, two, and then there's the money note, that low D note, that just sounds so good. Good stuff. Now, as we start the second A part, we're going to keep that same melody, but we're just going to beef it up a little bit. And I, I want to explain to you how I do that, because I not only want to teach you how to play this song, I want you to know how I go about um, making my um, versions a little bit more complex. So we're going to talk about some blues notes here. Mm -hmm. 